Over the last 30 years, protein-based medicines have emerged as therapeutically and commercially important drugs. However, as these biopharmaceuticals are proteins, they're only marginally stable, and so their, their structure can be perturbed by small changes in the environment encountered during manufacture. So our initial study, which we published earlier last year, um, we were interested in how extensional flows and shear flows can damage proteins. So what happens with extensional flows? This could occur in filtration, for example, where you have a flow moving slowly, and then all of a the sudden there's a contraction in the flow and the fluid is forced to rapidly accelerate. So using this model here, this is a GCSF, which we stressed in our previous study, you could be trundling along slowly, and then at the contraction point, as the flow accelerates, the protein may stretch out, exposing aggregation-prone regions. And then in our capillary here, we have a high shear region. So we have a shear flow where we have layers of fluid traveling at different speeds, which may influence the aggregation. Now, rather than a mock-up of the device like we have here, our real device consists of two syringes connected together with a capillary. We shuffle our protein of interest between uh, the two syringes and then perform a range of analytical techniques afterwards one of which was a pelleting assay where we spin the sample down and then quantify the amount of protein left in solution afterwards as you can see on the screen we took an array of different proteins in our previous study of various topologies and pharmaceutical interest from our collaborators Medimune now we stressed that our proteins for 20 to 100 passes but what we could see is they have markedly different aggregation behavior, but this was all done at the same speed. So for BSA, what we found is that when we stress it for 100 passes at a range of different speed, there's a plunger velocity and equivalent strain rate where you start to see aggregation in a region where we didn't get any. So what we thought for these biopharmaceutical proteins, which are much more susceptible to the effects of extensional flow, is that perhaps this speed threshold may occur earlier and that the subsequent aggregation landscape may be more complicated. So in this um, study, so we really uh, we, we put our three different proteins, so this is the, for the BSA and the two antibodies under the extensional flow and this is also included in the CL force. So basically these are the representation of the um, 3D plot or 3D surfaces, the number of pass plunger velocity versus the protein aggregation. So you can see like BSA requires some, some sort of the threshold <clears throat> to unfold and followed by the uh, aggregation. However, the two different um, proteins or the two different maps, they're really sensitive to the um, extensional flow and they can they can easily differentiate based on their 3D surfaces as well. So if you see the STT, for example, which is more resistant to, to this one, so it's covered most of the um, blue area, which correspond to nearly 22 20 to 40 percent. However, the WFL, which is more aggregation form, which is mostly cover the red of the area. And despite the like, these two protein have on, differ only uh, by six residue. So, as Amit has shown you, these two proteins that only differ by six residues show remarkably different behavior under different fluid strains and stresses. This led us to to um, think about uh, assessing the ability of this device in formulation studies. And this graph here shows that the, um, the, the most aggregation prone protein here, WFL shown in black bars, is essentially resistant to any changes in aggregation propensity. However, the more um, manufacturable protein, STT, shows that um, histidine buffer, um, this protein performs less well in histidine buffer, but performs very well in phosphate buffer, as this graph shows the percentage of protein in the pellet. Uh, and interestingly, another protein called MAP1 shows the completely the inverse behavior. So together, this study shows that extensional flow can be used to assess different candidate proteins for their aggregation behavior early on in development. It can also be used 
as a formulation tool to allow production of difficult to produce proteins and it can also be used to investigate whether bioprocess parameters can be changed um, to allow the production of difficult to produce proteins.